Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be talking about the principles that Jigoro Kano laid out for throwing. So we all know that the 1800s are a very long time ago at this point and the level of competition has substantially evolved and there's just so much and the gripping tactics, throwing, sports science, strength, a lot of guys and girls are now much uh, stronger. Nothing wrong with that. Of course, you need to have whatever advantage you need in life in general. And having sound technique and good strength is optimal if you want to be a world champion or the best. So, but that's not to say that it's the only way or you're either strong or you're either uh, like Jigoro Kano. Today we're going to be seeing the fundamentals of them and of course to do that we're going to be looking back at the Nage no Kata. So this is very important because the more I advance, the more I see the things that are actually, I wouldn't say hidden, but the things that are put there and just simply ignored and I will show you because a lot of things that you would think are not possible in competition, they actually are and they're probably easier for you to do. So the Nage no Kata uh, presents throws as either something that's given to you or it's something that you create a particular situation so you can absorb your opponent into that technique effortlessly. So depending on what type of fight you are having, you need to learn to distinguish the two because you know, forcing something is not always the best thing, especially as you get older. So first technique I want to talk about is Uchimata. So Uchimata, everyone knows, blast your hips, you know, throw them upwards. And yet here we see you are circularly absorbing your partner into you as you move your body in order to move them. And then uh, as they are split and the trailing leg is following, they are unstable and thus you reap or sweep upwards, um, very effortless, very beautiful, and not many people know how to do this. And uh, when preparing for kata, it's probably the hardest one to do. So what do we know today is this form, when we are drilling, when we are uh, preparing for uh, randori, etc. and um, usually you see this in competition now granted the big pull to the upward is obviously not possible in randori so you pull towards you you bend your elbows there's many ways of doing it but the stepping is almost this way so it's one two or one two back step and the three comes in there is one step two step but they all follow this particular principle but here Okada is showing that when you are in the same stance with your opponent meaning you have the same dominant hand right versus right you can actually take a step diagonally uh, away from them as you pull away or pull behind you sort of like a quarter of a circle and then you launch your leg but you don't uh, put your leg down you actually uh, retrieve it back as you can see the leg that's taking a step forward it doesn't step it it's a false step then it returns back so you position yourself properly as you pull them in towards you and speaking from my own anecdote I was able to pull this off quite a few times and for someone that is a beginner in judo I've been doing judo for five years now and who is not particularly strong I was still able to make this work so here is a Full competition example with the heavyweights, a plus 100 kilo. You see Kami Kawa do it. He is such a wasted potential, unfortunately. So in this uh, short documentary, he explains that his Uchimata is very unique and uh, not like everyone else. And he shows that here everyone uses hips and back steps. And while he, on the other hand, just rotates someone to the side and lifts his leg but obviously if you know a bit you know that this is the kata form obviously slightly modified for competition 
nothing is like Nage no Kata. But uh, when opposite stance, here you see you create the same pool, but this time instead of circular, it's a straight line. This is Masashi Ebinuma. I shot this video myself. Uh, so you pull towards you, you you turn away, and then you just launch your leg up. Very similar. No backstepping, nothing. And it's far easier, as he says, that um, I'm not strong, so I cannot just go in underneath and throw them. So next one is going to be your foot sweep. Um, it's not one, two, but it's all about creating that movement again. And uh, here you see Fabio create a big pull move to the side and then hops a step so everyone says that kuzushi with a big pull is not possible in competition it all depends on the direction here you see he takes it uh, to the front of his opponent and slightly diagonally downward and then he creates that movement everyone knows he's gonna go for it and yet very few have been able to stop him um, so he's not the strongest at all uh, especially for 73 and yet he was able to grace us with very beautiful uh, epons especially this one so here you see creates a big movement uh, absorbing him in goes down and then throws him on the axis of his shoulders just beautiful and uh, if he were a little bit stronger i do believe he could have achieved far 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 more in a very competitive world like judo but yet still with a very limited strength he was able to move and create very beautiful judo and also win the olympic medal so uh, the same can be said for sacrificing techniques sacrificing techniques this the way uh, the or the reason why a lot of people can still be very successful with them even at old age is because you are just eliminating yourself just going down and then taking them down with you if your hands are positioned properly if your movement is proper very little strength is needed little to no strength is needed and uh you know the same cannot be said for uchimata uchimata you still have to have that big pull move your body so it's not zero strength or full strength no there there is something in between but the point of this video is that uh, you have to know what you are dealing with so if the opponent let's say is very strong and very dominant know that you are the only way of throwing them is by creating that movement uh, and if you are a bit stronger than them you can feel it from the gripping hey use your strength some people are very blessed just go for it there's not there's no right way to do things but i will say this as you get older just know how to do a technique and it's probably the way that kano have put it out because if you do understand the kano way then you can do every other way that's what i believe and a lot of them are approaching 30 or in their 30s especially georgians and you can see some of them are starting to fall off they think they can still rely on that strength and very uh, violent gripping and are they are simply uh, not like they used to be and uh, it's showing um, so if you have something to add please uh, let me know this was shady and thank you for listening